Right hand, left hand, and trapezoidal sums. This is a little bit different notation. You're not going to have to memorize this notation, but this is proper notation. You should uh, kind of get used to it. And what we do when we sum things is, you remember, we take the width times the sum of the heights. So I'm going to be writing expressions that relate uh, width to the sum of the heights. And this is important when we do a trapezoidal sum, and, and you'll see exactly why. <coughs> what? <laughs> sure. So let's draw a curve this time that looks like this. We're going to create a boundary all the way over here at x sub n. And really what we want to do is we want to be able to take this function, whatever f of x is, and we want to be able to find the area bounded uh, beneath the curve and whatever x value this is, our bound. Okay. And so what we've done is we've constructed rectangles, right? And so far we've constructed what we call right-hand rectangles. So I'm just going to draw four of them right now. So I've got four rectangles, and tell me, when I go to evaluate the height of this first rectangle, do I evaluate the left-hand side of it or the right-hand side of it? I evaluate the right-hand side. And so here's how we say it. The width will be b minus a, meaning my interval, whatever the length of the interval is divided by n, that's my width, times the sum. That's the Greek letter sigma, capital S, which refers to sum. And we're going to sum all the function heights, right? So f of x sub i. And, and as long as you can get through that, then, then we're good. Okay, we start with the right-hand side of it. We will call that the first, the very first um, x-coordinate. And we will sum all the way through however many n intervals, n rectangles that there are. Uh, it's an I, uh, I don't know why I've been sigma notation, it kind of curled their eyes over and it's a habit now, I'm sorry. But right hand we've done. Yep, this is for right handed. I'm now going to draw a left handed one. So now I go to the left hand side of each one. So for this rectangle, I'll, I'll draw it in red. Left hand side, left hand side, left hand side, and I guess left hand side for that portion just gives me zero, doesn't it? I mean, it's all the way down the bottom. So you tell me what's different about computing a left hand compared to computing a right hand. Okay, you guys have identified that one happens to be an overestimate, one does happen to be an underestimate. That, that, that's a good idea. But second of all, um, yeah, it's where you start. The, the left-hand side doesn't start at x sub 1. It would start at x sub 0. And it doesn't end at x sub n. It ends at x sub n minus 1. So just the beginning and the last points which we identify are different. So I could do b minus a over n, which represents what? The width times the sum of f of x sub i. And this time we begin with i is equal to 0, and we sum to n minus 1.
result. The only thing that's different is your starting point and ending point. Notice i equals 1, i equals 0, n and n minus 1. Yes, but your rectangle, the, the left-hand side of the rectangle, evaluates at x sub n minus 1 up to here and multiplies it by that width. So it does carry the whole thing. Okay? So good question. Now, um, this is really exciting. So whether you find it exciting or not, pretend like you are. That will be really helpful. So uh, one approximation that happens to be very excellent would be a trapezoidal approximation. So watch this. As I draw this, I'll draw this side up here to that coordinate, and I'll draw this one up here to that coordinate, and then I'll connect the two together. And uh, <laughs> is it, what, that, isn't that a pretty cool assessment? And then I, I can do this one right here. And look at that. Whoa. Any for the day, who can tell me whether the trapezoidal is an underestimate or overestimate? It is an underestimate. A lot of A's today. So trapezoidal is, is a really, really good estimate. But the question is, how on earth do we actually work with a trapezoidal estimate? Well, you, you look like a triangle. So... <laughs> <laughs> Means you got a pinhead. All right. Okay. Here we go. Trapezoid. What's the area of a trapezoid? One half times the height times the sum of the bases. Very good. Good job. Now, I want you to look at these trapezoids somewhat sideways, okay? As you look at them sideways, I'm going to call... Um, say this f of x sub n minus 1 is one base. I'm going to call this f of x sub n the other base, and I'll call the height the what? The width. Yeah. This is the width. So look what I have here. Colleen, it's, it's, it's excellent that you were able to join us today. So area is equal to one half times, uh, instead of height, I'm going to talk about the width of each rectangle, which is b minus a over n times, what's up, Sean? Well, yeah, it ends up being a, a triangle. It doesn't have, I mean, you could have functions where it is a rectangle. No, it's trapezoid. Yes, yes. It's a trapezoid where one of the bases is zero. There you go. Okay, so, oh. <laughs> okay, let's end this. Let's end this so we don't get bored with it or lost with it, okay? One half times the width times this. Let me tell you what this means. What this means, just, just pause and look at it because it, it, it looks confusing, but I, I'm going to make it really simple for you, okay? Um, this piece right here is the left-hand sums, right? This piece here is the right-hand sums, right? Because left-hand sums would be one base, uh, right-hand sums would be the other base. And so what you have here is you have the width and you have one half. So we sum these two things and multiply it by one half. What is that when you sum two things, you multiply one half? The average. So really, trapezoidal uh, sum is simply this. Average of left and right. Not the midpoint. 
We're not going to do midpoint sums. I don't see much point to them. Uh, we're going to do trapezoidal sums instead. They're excellent. Uh, they give a very, very accurate estimation, and it's simply the average of the left and the right. So if we could come up with the right, we could come up with the left, we average it, we're done. Got it? Let's do it. Okay, we want to find the area bounded between the curve f of x equals uh, the square root of x, the x-axis, and the line x equals 4 by constructing eight rectangles. We're going to find the right-hand sum, the left-hand sum, and the trapezoidal sum. This is how the other problems on the back side will go. And the first thing we should do is we should draw a picture. So I'm going to draw a picture of the square root of x bounded by x equals 4. Divided into how many rectangles? Eight. I'm not even going to draw the rectangles right now, I'm just going to draw the intervals so I can understand exactly what I'm talking about here. The right-hand sum is what we are going to start with. And the right sum takes the width times the sum of the heights. What is the width? The width of each rectangle is one-half. Now we need to multiply it by the sum of the heights. Do you remember the quick way that we used to multiply the sum of, or to find out the sum of the heights? We take our calculator out. What do I grab first? Very good. Sum sequence. Second list. We go over to ops. Or we go over to math. We find sum. Uh, we go to second list. Go over to ops. We grab five for sequence. I do need to enter it into y equals as well, correct? So I'll, I'll go back there. I'll enter the square root of x. So I got sum of the sequence of what? Identify the variables as function y1, comma, identify my variables x. This is what changes, OK? What do I put in now? My start point, which is when I'm working with a right-hand sum, my start point will be 0.5. Right hand. So, so on this first rectangle from 0 to 1 half, I'll take the right-hand side of it, which is 1 half. I'm going to... I'm, I'm Morgan, I'm going to look at my very first rectangle, and for my very first rectangle, the right side of it's at one half. Okay. Comma, what is the, what's the last point I'll evaluate? Four. Comma, what is my increment each time? Point five. And I end there. Now, very careful on your calculators. Please only do what I do. Right now, only press enter. 11.53. Okay? So, don't, no, don't, 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 don't multiply anything. Don't multiply anything. Trust me. Trust me. I'll show you. Don't divide by two. Don't do anything. Before I evaluate that, let me figure out the left-hand sum, and I'll show you why. Trust me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my last entry. Second entry. Oh, now I could go back into it and change the stuff I want. What's the only thing that changes in this problem? The starting point. So for my left-hand side, what is my start point? So instead of a 0.5, I will write 0. And instead of going all the way to 4, I go to 3. Then I have to insert 
point five. And my width is 0.5. So as opposed to typing all that over again, if I just grab second entry, then I'm good to go, right? Whatever. <laughs> what? Girls? Okay, I'm almost done with this. So we got this. We sum this, and we get 9.53. Yes. Oh, um, as we draw this very last rectangle here, I will be looking at the left side of it to evaluate the height. I'm not going all the way up to 4. I'm, I'm going at the height at 3.5. Exactly. So now I can figure out both of these areas or both of these sums by going 0.5 times 11.53. I get 5.765. The left-hand sum will be 0.5 times 9.53, and I get 4.765. How do you need, uh, how do you do a, uh, yeah, you, how do you do a trapezoidal? So in order to do a trapezoidal sum, we average it, which is an extremely accurate result, 5.765 plus 4.765 divided by 2, 5. No, no, we don't need to times the width. It's already been done. We already multiplied by the width up here. So 5.265. Um, to not give away the magic, uh, we'll just uh, go to the actual uh, graph. Uh, uh, Sean's question was, how accurate is this? Well, if I go second, calculate, and some people realize that this integral piece right here does calculate the area exactly. Our lower limit is 0. Our upper limit is 4. And that gives us an exact amount of 5.33. Okay, so very good. You're amazing. So, uh, so, and, and to you, I will say that uh, this last one, the number five, you'll divide it into a hundred rectangles. That'll be a challenging one for you. And when you do that, you want to use your calculator for all of it. The back side is your homework. You're good to go. Go to work. <laughs>